What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Kenny For Real, where we sit down and talk about hoops. And um, we do these post-game things after every game. And honestly, I woke up this morning thinking that today was going to be the last post-game of the NBA season. I was wrong. I was wrong. And I'm so happy that I was wrong because I want more basketball. And the Miami Heat came out and put the rest of the world on the back. And it was like, we're going to get more hoops. You know what I'm saying? So be sure to leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new. Uh, we've been doing these post-game talks after every game. Now, if you newer people around here, I am a neutral fan in this fight. I don't care if the Lakers win or the Heat win. I do want as much basketball as possible as long as it's at the level of great basketball. And after game two, when I posted that video basically saying that, man, this don't even feel like a finals, everything else has dramatically changed. The Heat have woken up. Um, the Lakers have, have kept it close and everything. And we have a series, y'all, going into game six. And, man, this is so crazy because at the, after the first two games, it felt like legitimately that the Lakers might sweep and it's going to be the worst NBA Finals in a very long time. Things have changed. Things have changed. And for talking about Game 5, it felt like, and this is going to be weird to say, it felt like a Lakers win for sure. For sure felt like a Lakers win. And it's funny to say because they only held a couple leads throughout this entire game. They held a lead in the first quarter. They led a few back-to-back, -back, you know what I'm saying, bucket after bucket in the fourth quarter. That was it. Everything else was Miami Heat. But it just felt like a Lakers game because LeBron had a 40-point close to triple-double for one. We were talking about the last couple videos of me saying, like, man, though LeBron's putting up crazy stats, 28, 10, and 10s and stuff like that, he hasn't really had a takeover moment or a big, big game. This was his big, big game. So it felt like he was going to be able to close it out. Not only that, he turned into the real dead shot because he was doing that look down three all game. You're probably not going to get LeBron James shooting that well from three again in this series. It just doesn't really happen often. So it felt like a game that they were going to be able to come in, take the lead back, and hold that lead. But they weren't. And there's a few reasons for that. <laughs> I'm not going to blame it on Danny Green like everybody else, even though we will talk about Danny Green. Um, I really think that whatever's going on with Anthony Davis really hurt him in that second half. And, and Anthony Davis is a player that throughout the course of his entire career, he'll go down a few times um, a game, just go down a few times a game, or he's holding his arm, he's holding his wrist, he's holding his ankle, and you never really know what to think about an Anthony Davis injury until five minutes later. Because in a lot of situations, if he tweaks his ankle in a game, he gets pulled out, and he's on a sideline run, and he comes in, and he's like he's back to 100%. But this one was different, obviously. Uh, they did throw him back in the game, and I was like, okay, cool, Anthony Davis is here. But he was, he was not putting a lot of weight on it this entire second half, and especially in the fourth quarter. Fourth quarter, he was sitting in the corner. He was sitting in a dunker spot. He, there was possessions where his team was getting back on offense, and he was barely getting up court. Like, whatever's going on with the heel, ankle, whatever it may be, um, I hope it's nothing, bro. I would hate for another injury to happen. Of course, this, this series has been hit with injuries. Bam missing two games. Drogic haven't been able to play. But I just want the best possible versions of each team. And, of course, again, the Heat are missing some players. But I still just want everybody to be as healthy as possible. So I hope that is nothing going on. But him not being able to basically perform for the second half might have been the reason why why they didn't close this out. You know, a couple couple more buckets from Anthony Davis is in, is in the bag. It's in the bag. Especially when you have uh, Kenny, Kenny Carwell Pope. Plan how he's playing, bro. I saw a picture on Twitter, and it's incredible that somebody spent the time to Photoshop Contavious Caldwell Pope with a Finals MVP. Hilarious, and he was playing like it, bro. And his, he was an MVP in his role. You get me? And as if you could get a few players on your team every single night to be the MVP of their role, boom, you're gonna win that game. Um, but so it definitely felt like a Lakers win. But uh, there were some people on the other side of the ball that weren't going for that. Of course, I ain't even mentioned the name Jimmy Butler with four minutes in. We got to talk about Jimmy Butler. I'll save that. But I want to talk about Duncan Robinson first. Somebody on Twitter. All right, it was me. Okay, it was me. I was going I was gonna blame it on somebody else on Twitter just in case y'all don't like this. Tell me what you think, honestly. Tell me what you think. If it's whack, tell me it's whack. You know, don't don't hold out. Dr. Three. Because it's Duncan Robinson, it's DR3, but then he hits so many threes, but he don't wear the number three. Like, if he wore the number three, it would make more sense. He was 55. The man is incredible. Did you know that Duncan Robinson was a D3 player and was undrafted? I know you did because they talk about it every time he hit a shot. That's just the way it is on the call. Every single time Duncan Robinson do something. Man, we talking about a player that was undrafted. He was playing three D3 in the Miami. He gave him a We know the story. We know the story. It's a great story, but when you say it every single game, multiple times a game, it kind of loses its umph. 
But this is one of those games, man. I've been becoming a fan of Duncan Robinson for a few reasons. Obviously, on the court, he is a flamethrower, and there's not many people that shoot better than him. That's one. But I've been listening to a lot of J.J. Reddick's podcast, and if you did not know, he's a big part of that. He's like their bubble correspondent. The way J.J. Reddick had it was like, we're going to have one player that's still in the bubble talk to us about the bubble every single week. And if that player gets eliminated, then we just bring somebody else from the bubble. But Duncan Robinson was like, I want to stay on J.J. Reddick's podcast, so we're never going to get eliminated. And today he had his biggest game of this series, even though he had a couple good games, man. But the reason why Duncan Robinson is so fascinated to me is that no matter where he catches the ball, no matter how bad of a pass it can be, he can catch it and shoot it immediately. Immediately. You know how, like, I'm not a hooper. But I've played basketball before for multiple years. When I get a, get a pass, whether I have to bring it to this point and then raise up. Not Duncan Robinson, not Dr. Three. Okay, no hit. It don't fit. But you still let me know. Not Duncan Robinson. He catches it. It's going right up. It's going right up. And he was a menace today. Uh, the Lakers had a few possessions in this game after KCP hit that second three to give them their first lead since the first quarter where the Lakers tapped in defensively and they were getting no stops. And again, I'm looking at my girlfriend like, yep, you know, she's she's rooting for the Heat because she's a Jimmy Butler fan, which makes sense. But I was telling her like, man, the Lakers are probably going to pull this out because after that shot, they were clamping up defensively. But Duncan Robinson is one of those players, the J.J. Reddick's types, the Klay Thompson's, the, the Steph Curry were like his advantage is his lungs, bro. As long as he can run, as, as as long as he can be effective. For real. No matter who they threw on him, Caruso, Danny Green, KCP, it didn't matter. He was going off the screens all game long and getting shots. And, and one thing I heard them talk about, which is so fascinating because we're talking about two of the greatest shooters in the NBA, J.J. Redick and Duncan Robinson. When they talk about shooting, it is fascinating because they are like the kings of that craft. And one thing they were saying is that, like, Duncan was saying, if I can get in the game and I can get off 10 plus threes, the whole team is happy. Because he's so efficient that if he gets off 10 plus threes, that's at least four going in. And boom, you just got 12 points. And that's if he's having a bet. That's like a normal game. You have games like tonight where he's just feel like he's hitting the mall. And then those 10 threes that he got off, maybe he has six of them. Come on, bro. It's just like stuff like that is, is incredible when you really think about it. And it's probably why like Daryl Morey and them think about the analytics because those threes add up. They do add up. So you got him. This is not particularly a good game for Bam. Um, but he had his moments. He had a couple big shots. Um, but, of course, Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler, we talked about it after after the last game, right? So Jimmy Butler comes out in game three. He has this the incredible game, 40-point triple-double, the best game of his NBA career. Done. The game five comes around, and then the Lakers throw Anthony Davis on him, and they kind of neutralize him, and they lose that game. Today, whatever it was, he was like, you know what? I just got to go with Anthony Davis. I just have to do it. I, like, in order for the Heat to win games, Jimmy Butler has to be the best player on the court or the second best player on the court. And and, and today it was close. LeBron and, and LeBron and Jimmy Butler were very close on who's the best player on the court. You could say box score. Uh, LeBron had 40 points, 13, and 7 assists, whatever it was. And Jimmy Butler's stat line didn't look as incredible as that, even though he did get the triple-double. They were battling to see who was the best player tonight. Bucket for bucket, um, Jimmy defensively, had like five, four, five steals, and some of them timely, just kind of getting in there behind Anthony Davis, wiping it. Just overall, man, Jimmy Butler is a dog, bro, and I can't understand how somebody could dislike Jimmy Butler, especially watching him play right now, especially watching him play right now. He is giving it all, like that one screenshot or moment where he gets fouled and he's limped over because he's played every single minute of this game. I felt them, and I felt for him, and I, at that moment, I was like, I want to see Jimmy be successful. Today's game, I was... I was good with the Jeff Van Gundy call. Sometimes his calls are kind of trash, but today it was good because I think he did a pretty he did a pretty good job. He did a pretty good job today on a few things, kind of explaining to things because the referees are always going to be ah god damn it here we go again. The referees are always going to be a conversation amongst fans. Hey, this team's getting this call. This team's not getting this call. There was a specific call late in the game. Jimmy Butler drives to the lane. Anthony Davis goes up. He gets called for a foul. Jeff Van Gundy is explaining to the fans at home why that's a foul. And I think that type of insight is incredible uh, for just the normal fan. Because when you just look at it, it looks like he goes straight up. But when you really dissect it, he did jump forward. And jumping forward is not rule of verticality. Like, the reason Roy Hibbert got paid all that money is because he literally knew how to stand still and jump straight up like this. But Anthony Davis, he jumped up and up. You get what I'm saying? Boom, boom. And that, in that case, is a foul. Um, and I just saw Frank Vogel say, like, hey, that foul is the reason why we lost. Wouldn't go that far. Wouldn't go that far. And the other thing about Jeff Van Gundy, when I'm talking about it, is the, the possession that mattered, right? The last possession, LeBron has the ball. Um, <laughs> LeBron has the ball. He drives to the lane. 
in the before he drives to the lane, before the plays develop, Jeff Van Gundy says something along the lines of, I wouldn't be surprised if the Heat double LeBron and let Danny Green do whatever he wants. And that's exactly what they did. Because at the end of the day, uh, a Danny Green three is something you live with at this moment. It is. It's something you live with. Dead shot is not dead shot. Dead shot ain't got no bullets in the clip, whatever it may be. Um, but at the end of the day, I know this is going to be a big conversation um, on TV and on Twitter and stuff, and it's probably already happening right now. Um, of people talking about that possession, right? People wanting LeBron to go straight up, and I understand it. I mean, he had been a bulldozer all game long. He has 40 points, and the, the, the shots that he did miss at the rim, it seems like he was getting his own rebound and going right back up. So I understand wanting to be like, hey, LeBron, how about we finish that one because you have been so dominant today. But at the end of the day, LeBron is programmed to make the right basketball play to his own fa- to his own uh, falling at sometimes, right? Sometimes it works out perfectly. You hit the corner to this person, and boom, they hit the shot. Then boom, they're NBA champions. If he, if Danny Green hits that shot, we praise LeBron for making the pass, and we praise Danny Green for hitting the shot. But the fact that Danny Green did not hit that shot, you're going to talk bad about LeBron not taking over, and you're also going to talk bad about Danny Green for missing that shot, even though he did a lot of things today. This just, just it was just bad, Danny Green. I felt, I felt bad for him. I don't know if he's a social media user, but if he is, he better stay off it tonight. He better stay off it tonight. So I understand people that, that that want their best player to have that killer instinct. No matter what, I want to get the shot up. I understand that. But LeBron is usually going to make the right basketball play. And if you ask any coach, that is the best basketball play. Maybe not the best play when you're LeBron James. Do you, do you get the, the disconnection? I hope you do. Um, but Danny Danny Green, man, oh, my God. I, I think at the box score it says he went like two for six, which isn't terrible. But I promise all of the misses that he hit or that he missed, just Twitter was killing him, eating him alive. It got to the point one time where he's open on the wing, he shoots it, and he almost like, you know, the wedgies where you're stuck in the corner of the rim, that's one. And then a couple possessions later, this is what killed me, y'all. When I was a kid or when I was hooping back in the day, I didn't go very far, but you get me. When I was hooping back in the day, Coach used to say, like, man, if you miss your first first two threes, take a step in. Get the get the midi going and then step back. That's what Danny Green tried to do. He took a dribble in to take a mid-range jump shot. And when I tell you, it was the shortest shot that wasn't blocked of all time. Ever. Like, Danny, they don't pay you to put the ball on the floor, Danny. They actually just paying you to. Why are they pay? I don't know why they paying them. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, but Danny Green better stay off social media today. Um. Jimmy Butler was incredible. I don't know if I already talked about it, but Jimmy Butler is incredible, and this is the type of games that, that they need. They need. And with the Anthony Davis injury, again, I don't know what it is. Will he be 100% by Sunday, potentially? If he's not, though, we, we're we really in for it, man. It's so funny how things change just in a short period of time. After two games, we were like, man, Lakers sweet probably. And now we're saying games. we're going to see game six. And depending on Anthony Davis' health, we might see a game seven in the series. We might. We might. You know? Overall, this is probably the best game of the bubble. I know we had a few games that went like double overtime, which are good, don't get me wrong, but the fact that we are in the finals and a closeout game for one of the teams, this was the best game to me. Oh, I feel like I'm missing something. I, and sometimes I do take notes. Did I take notes today? Um, The top thing in my, in my notes says attention span. I don't remember what that was about. Uh, Duncan Robinson catch, Danny Green, LOL. Yeah, okay, so I think that's it. And I feel like I'm forgetting something, but whatever. Uh, always an open dialogue. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about this game, the rest of the series. Always up for it. Love y'all. Uh, I'm sorry this is coming out so late. I apologize.